Yeah, a, a fucked up moment for me, a, a trying moment, I would say, for me, was the transition from Disney to Priority. It was it was a, a, a good experience, but it was definitely a test of time because, um, you know, it's going from rolling out to shows with 20 car entourages to nobody's really coming around no more because we're trying to like transition to another label and you know there's we're not putting no records out so speaking on that time that rough patch or i say that test was you know the negotiation started and one thing a lot of cats don't know and i'm hoping this is going to be encouraging to you is that these lawyers they have certain relationships some of them went to school together some of them was rivals some of them was college rivals. So a lot of times when you're doing business and your lawyer's here and you got another person got the lawyer, it ain't just about the negotiations between them. It gets personal because they're like, oh, fuck that dude. I went to school with him. Oh, fuck that dude. He was a rival of my college. Like, what the fuck they got to do with my, my life here? You know what I'm saying? So anyway, that's one part of it is the, the, when the negotiations went down. So we got offered a deal from capital and priority at the same time. So the negotiations start with priority. Priority had to pay Disney probably close to 100000 for us to leave. Then it was our deal. Um, the negotiating was really weird. It, it, was, it was going on three months. My money's dwindling. And I'm, I'm a different type of person. Like, I, I believe in survival, and I believe in living for your freedom and your pride. Because the people that are say, oh, he fell off, is the same person that can't do shit for you. So if... If you're gonna say I fell off, you either gotta be a solutionist and 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 give me a direction to go or else mind your fucking business. You're not you're not saying nothing that holds no weight. So we negotiate, I'm talking to my lawyer, he's like, nah, this is gonna be nice. I'm gonna have y'all tight, y'all gonna be straight. I said, well, it's getting tight around here. You know, I'm you know, then so another three, four weeks go past. I'm like, what the fuck? So I hit him up like, yo, do I gotta get a job? Let me know, I get a job, cause I like money. I had money before I got into the rap shit. I had a job, was getting money. It was frustrating, cause you're talking about three months now. But like, again, I said, you're sitting there thinking that they're slow, but it's like, oh, I don't fuck with time over there, so I'll send in the paperwork tomorrow. And your motherfucking career's in the rear, so, you know, I was staying with my cousin at that time. Um, KG from Naughty by Nature used to come out. Red Man came to that crib. Um, just, you know, visit, talking music and just kicking it, going over sounds and drums. So another two, three weeks go by. Now I'm getting angry. Now I'm, now I'm, now I'm, I'm not angry at nobody specific, but I'm angry kind of almost like me and the situation. Like, this shit don't happen then, I gotta go get some money. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I don't, I never felt comfortable putting all my eggs in one basket. So my lawyer says, uh, well, you gotta come up here and sign a, a letter of intent. So we went up there and signed a letter of intent. They didn't think nothing about it. So now I'm about to call him again like two weeks later. Then he ended up hitting us saying, yo, come to the office. When we got to the office, that letter of intent, it allowed us to have the check and the contract at the same time. You know what I'm saying? And then he was like, look, let me explain something to you. Y'all are gonna be executive producing your own record. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are in charge of nothing. Y'all don't have no A&R. You guys is the boss. So I'm gonna set you up to go see um, Millie at the bank. So we we go up there, we sign, they're like, oh shit, we got the contract, we got the check. So now here comes the test. Go in the bank, oh, no, 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 your last name's no good here. Your, uh, your signature's no good here. You guys can just come in here and do whatever you want. Like we was getting caught in the blanche treatment in the bank. So I'm like, oh, okay, this is what corporate's like. You know, you learn it. So we put the check in the longest two weeks of my life. Wait for a six digit check. When you young and you're like, I got $140,000 and you're sitting there. So when you lay down and go to sleep, you think you wake up the next morning, that shit's five minutes from when you close your eyes. That's how much anxiety is just rushing through you. Like, oh my God, I gotta wait two, two weeks. Like it's two solid weeks before I get a dime. It's the longest two weeks of your life. When you're young, when you're young and you wait for that bread, you got $140,000? Oh my God, I was laying down like the third night. I was like this, like, you know what I'm saying? I was zombied out. When the money cleared, I changed again. So Mark's was like, yo, how much money are you going to take? I said, I'm taking three grand, man. He said, that's it? That's it. Got to took the three grand, paid like one or two bills. 
went in the limousine and went and picked up everybody that didn't act funny style when the negotiations was going on. Cause you know, the crew, it was like I said, 11, 12, 13, 15 car entourage, yo, yo, we gonna meet up here, ah, everything's cool. But when that negotiation started coming, shit started doing the way. Not that I'm mad at them, it's just that when nothing's happening, people don't gravitate to nothing. But what I'm saying is that the ones who kept visiting, I had the limousine go pick all of them up. I got them all fucked up. I like, whatever y'all want, y'all can have it, whatever y'all want tonight. I had motherfuckers throwing up outside the side of the limousine. So she throw up on all the way down the side of the limousine. I said, God damn, I know this man gonna be mad at us. He gonna have to clean his limousine all fucked up. But it was, the lesson of it is, you gotta have patience. Um, even do even when you find a success and you and you get the opportunity, there's pockets in that shit that you have to have patience and you gotta be business. Cause that shit'll stress you out. It'll have you strung out, you'll be, oh, you know, you'll just be on edge, you'll be biting your nails. So you gotta be resilient, man, you know? You gotta be resilient. Cause it is it, is you no, know, yeah, you got a good deal, but you still gotta wait. Yeah, you got the money, but you still got to budget right and, and, and take care of your songs and stuff like that first.